Before the year 1800, no European nation knew anything about the civilization known to us as ancient Egypt. The pharaohs were unknown. The mummies, the treasure, the temples, even the pyramids themselves, unknown. Several maps made before the year 1700 don't even depict any pyramids anywhere in Egypt, while the very same maps depict far less historically significant churches. Where were the pyramids that supposedly had been standing for 3,500 years? And why were they absent on pre-Columbian maps? To understand this is to understand that our westernized perception of ancient Egypt has been carefully molded by unscrupulous institutions of perverse knowledge. Everything that has been uncovered has been strategically packaged within a presupposed agenda and counter agenda, neither of which resembles truth. Unpackaging the truth about the history of ancient Egypt first begins with accepting a new truth. America is Egypt. Across high coals to show you my feet, so you know I got soul. Top choice, underground rapper with the pop voice. They are not ready, they sweat and they not poised. I'm built for this, like pyramids. This is the shit kids put on their Christmas list. Everybody told me stay in my lane when they never took a trip to the place where I came from. Never saw the trees that my ancestors swank from. Never tried to understand where we got our slang from. Never felt the breeze of the slave masters whip. Thankfully, some artifacts in ancient cities yet remain, such as these once city walls, intentionally preserved as mounds in a golf course in Newark, Ohio. I'm standing here at the parallel walls that connect the gigantic octagon with a large circle. The circle is 1,054 feet in diameter. The octagon encloses 50 acres, which is large enough to encompass four Roman Colosseums. This was built by the ancient Hopewell culture that lived in this region between about 100 BC and AD 400. The level of precision, uh, it is incredible. The entire Newark Earthworks encompasses four and a half square miles, and it was the largest complex of geometric earthworks ever built in the world. It includes two circles, a gigantic octagon, a square. And actually, what we call the Hopewell culture, uh, things like it at least, and things related to it, uh, covered much of Eastern North America in different parts, as far south as Florida, as far east as, uh, as far west as Kansas City, as far east as perhaps New York. They had to be incredibly sophisticated. Um, to be able to build these mounds perfectly, you know, in unison to an octagon shape and a circular shape. It's clear that they rival by any scale uh, any other cultural achievement in the world. The Great Pyramids, the Great Wall of China, um, the Roman Colosseum. I'm not that surprised by it. Um, there's so many other things that we see when we start learning about and looking into native culture that I think people on the surface may be surprised because they tend to think of Indian people as anti-intellectual or, you know, non-scientific or somehow, you know, living in the backwoods and not knowledgeable about things like that. The knowledge embedded in these earthworks and encoded in their structure is anything but primitive. It's remarkable. You know, it also shows that not just high math, but uh, these sites are lined up primarily with uh, the, lunar, uh, the lunar calendar. They had high math. They understood geometry, 
And because of the lunar calendar, they also understood the heavens, astronomy. What I've learned now is just how amazing uh, they were in terms of their knowledge of the solar system and of mathematics. And then they had the unit of, of measurement was 606, which they call the stade. One side of the Great Pyramid from the base to the tip of the apex is 606 feet. If you square inside the octagon, which the uh, uh, surveyors like to call, it's a term they use, squaring, squaring the circle, and you divide that up into four equal parts inside of cubes, you'll find those cubes are all made of 606 foot lines per cube side. The angle of the Great Pyramid of Egypt runs 51.8 degrees uh, up the slope from the base to the, to the angle. That, that measurement is there. And when you come off of the, uh, the baseline at uh, Newark and you run true north and then measure that angle back to the baseline, what do we find? 51.8 degrees. So did they have the same math as the ancient Egyptians? Uh, well, I gotta say, yeah, it sure looks like it. Here we have an ancient tablet with some sort of script. I've heard many historians call this artifact fake, not because there is physical evidence supporting their case, but because Indians had no written language. Therefore, it is deemed counterfeit. It should be noted that the only school of thought where this artifact would be considered legitimate as if it falls under the notion that this tablet is not an original Indian artifact, but was instead left by Europeans who traveled to visit the Americas generations earlier. This gatekeeping mechanism is the indoctrinated thought that permeates the halls of academia and the psyche of anyone exposed to Western education. These people were savages, without written language or record, is probably one of the most bigoted assumptions of an entire people that is still being taught in colleges and universities today. So the accredited world of academia says this tablet is fake because Indians didn't write. But what happens when more tablets are found in different places with the same type? script. Can the same argument be used to denounce their authenticity? Of course, the same argument could be used, but with each new discovery, that argument would weaken substantially to the point of an obvious cover-up. This new direction would not only include racist ideas, but additionally, it would attempt to limit the use of some artifacts. I'd like to uh, next read from the following uh, J.W. Powell's own words. Uh, this is a paper that he presented to the uh, members of the Smithsonian at the Bureau of Ethnology. And the title on the talk is uh, On Limitations to Use of Some Anthropological Data. And uh, it's pages uh, 73 through 86 of the 1879 and 1880 book that was uh, published in the Smithsonian. And the quote is as follows. Hence, it will be seen that it is illegitimate to use any pictographic matter of a date anterior to the discovery of the continent by Columbus for historic purposes. Man on the square though, every day he reminded me careful. It's a lot of dangerous food selling, then you get sucked in the world, fool. Just the type of shit worlds do, and it makes a lot of folks fearful. What dare you? He about to give you something that'll make you cheerful. It's only up from here, so you got nothing to fear. Even though nothing is clear, everything's up in the air, so nothing is fair. But we still up in somewhere. Wanna make peace and that piece is a comfortable shit.